Our new book, Ashley Men Will Make You Fat, is available now for pre-order. Check out bourbonbougieshop.com. And now for your next very informative and or wonderful video. Yesterday, I did the 10 worst states to live and work in in 2023. Today, I'm going to highlight the 10 best according to CNBC. Life, health, and inclusion is among the 10 categories of competitiveness. It is increasingly important in the state's overall ranking. We use data to measure factors including crime, environmental quality, health care, and child care in every state. We consider anti-discrimination laws and worker protections. So that is part of the methodology they use to compile these results. Number 10, Connecticut. Connecticut residents enjoy some of the best health care in the nation, and it shows Frequent physical distress is among the lowest in any state, according to United Health Foundation. Access to care is among the best anywhere, with primary care physician for every three residents. Crime is low, crime is low, and worker protections are robust. So their strengths: healthcare, low crime, and worker protections. Their weaknesses: air quality and voter rights. Tied for eighth is Massachusetts. The Bay State is another healthcare powerhouse with the nation's lowest percentage of people without health insurance. That's cool. It is a legacy of Romney Care, the healthcare reform signed into law by then Governor Mitt Romney in 2006, which became the template for the Affordable Care Act, which Republicans absolutely hated despite the successes in Massachusetts. So its strengths is healthcare, worker protection, reproductive rights, weaknesses, air quality, and child care. So Massachusetts is tied with Colorado. Okay, so for Colorado, it has 55 licensed facilities for every 100,000 residents. That is the fourth best in the nation. Colorado is positioning itself as a haven for reproductive rights and gender affirming care with a set of laws signed by Governor Jared Polis. Its strengths, child care, inclusiveness and voting rights, its weaknesses, air quality and crime. Number seven is Washington. The Evergreen State has the most worker-friendly wage policies in the nation. Protections against discrimination in Washington are among the strongest in any states. Its strengths, worker protection, inclusiveness, reproductive rights. Its weaknesses, crime, and child care. Number six is Oregon. And look at this little thumbnail that says resist Gilead. Absolutely. No state protects its workers the way the Beaver State does. Oxfam points to laws giving workers broad rights to organize. Reproductive rights protections are among the nation's strongest as well. In 2000, Oregon became the first state to require all elections to be conducted by mail, making voting easy and secure. Strengths, worker protection, reproductive rights, voting rights, weaknesses, crime, child care, and health care. I've honestly never heard of Oregon and Washington being riddled with crime, but you know, whatever. There'll be a part two for the last five. This is part two, best states to live and work. I'm on number five. Number five is Hawaii. Who wouldn't want to live in Hawaii? The air is pure. According to American Lung Association, healthcare is plentiful and crime is generally low. And it's Hawaii. But once you have gotten used to living in paradise, you'll find that child care options are limited. And reproductive rights and voting rights, while protected, could be better. So strengths for Hawaii, air quality, health care, and low crime, weaknesses, reproductive rights, voting rights, and child care. Number fourth on the list, Minnesota. Now looking at this snow, I wouldn't have done that, but they didn't ask me, but let's get into the rest of it. People in the North Star State pride themselves on being Minnesota nice. It's more than just a feeling. The Minnesota numbers back them up. The home of the famed Mayo Clinic is fourth in the nation for access to health care, according to the United Health Foundation. In 2023, the state codified reproductive rights and expanded voting rights. So their strengths are health care, reproductive rights, and voting rights, weaknesses, crime. Number three is New Jersey. It's no joke. The Garden State is one of America's most inclusive with broad protections against discrimination and among the nation's strongest guarantees of reproductive freedom. New Jersey is one of America's fastest, I mean, safest states, safe states. According to the FBI crime data, its violent crime rate is among the lowest in the nation. So strengths, reproductive rights, inclusiveness, low crime rate, weaknesses, air quality. Number two, Maine. The Pine State's serene reputation is well-deserved. The crime rate is the lowest in the country. Child care and health care are both readily available. Maine is also a welcoming state with broad protections against discrimination. 
strengths, low crime rate, childcare, healthcare, and inclusiveness. Weaknesses are air quality. Number one on this list, Vermont. By the numbers, living in the green mountain state is stress-free, easy, and healthy. That picture does look stress-free. Vermont offers America's best air quality with zero high ozone days per year and the nation's most accessible child care. Vermonters include broad protection against discrimination and it's one of the easiest states to vote in. Life in Vermont is good. So strengths, air quality, health care, child care, voting rights, weaknesses, worker protections, strong but not as strong as the rest. So that is the top 10 best places, according to CNBC, to live and to work. I mean, I wouldn't have thought of all 10 of these, but I'm not the one doing the research. You guys go ahead and chime in. So I've now done both the worst states to live and work in and the best states to live and work in. And this person said, what blue state wrote this? Sounds like someone's political smear campaign commercial. So when you think about history, if you know anything about history, um, the former Confederate slave states have been pretty terrible as far as poverty, health, education, and infrastructure ever since slavery was abolished and Jim Crow was basically, I mean, once desegregation happened. Once desegregation happened and the Great Migration happened and their free labor left, the former Confederate states couldn't really survive they became impoverished and they have remained impoverished because their free source of labor to exploit and use went away. And these people did not have the capacity to continue to do that without cheap or exploited labor. So if you know anything about history, just think about the fact that all of these people left the South. They left the former slave states. They left Jim Crow. Now, I'm not saying that things got particularly better in the North and the West. Throughout history, they did improve. So that is the reason why, even without me looking at the methodology, I know that these states that were the worst are the worst. Because if you look at the metrics for education, health care, um, if you look up the infrastructure, all of that, those telltale signs, you will see that they are mostly Republican and mostly former Confederate states that are at the bottom. They are consistently at the bottom because they were exploiting labor. They did not have the talents or the, the wherewithal to do the, the hard work to be successful on their own. They had to use the backs of Black people, um, you know, indigenous labor and Mexican labor and immigrants that came from across the globe. So if you don't believe me, history is there for you to read. 